Hi guys, it's been a crazy couple of months here with all kinds of pickups and media related stuff, so I've fallen a little behind in talking about Shenmue, uh, so I'll have two videos going up this month. First one here, I just wanted to do a little bit of an update and just uh, hear what you guys had to think about the reveal. There's going to be fishing and possibly some sort of clothes washing area mini game going on here. I'm glad that a lot of these updates and a lot of what we've seen seems to show that it's going to be sort of a continuation and evolution of uh, the quick time events from 1 and 2. It's not going to radically change the gameplay style, just sort of update it in little ways from what we've seen so far. And it's cool that it's uh, Gachinko fishing. It's not going to be with, you know, a bait and tackle. You're not going to be out, out there sitting there with a fishing rod. It's going to be more active, uh, more interactive. It's going to be kind of cool. And I really can't wait till we see a little bit of gameplay of that. that. That I'm pretty interested in. As far as the clothes washing area, I think it's going to be more of a one of those kind of daily chore type things, like airing out the books. Uh, but the fishing thing, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. Could be a great way to work on timing and get some more techniques down that way. Could be pretty involved in with learning some new techniques. Could be really kind of cool. So those are pretty neat, and it's interesting seeing that that was one of the things they wanted to include in Shenmue 2, but there wasn't a way to really do that. There's so much they wanted to include in Shenmue uh, 1 and 2, it's crazy, especially Shenmue 2. The game's already massive, and all the ideas they had, oh man. So those are really cool updates, and I can't wait to see more that we're going to get. I'm thinking this year, it looks like, from what we're seeing, I'm being more and more convinced with every passing month that this will actually be out at the end of this year. I, in the beginning, was like, all right, you know, it's a great target to shoot for, but with a project like this, I could see it being delayed, but over time, I've become a little more and more confident, and I really think we're gonna see this before the end of the year. And yeah, that Sega, you need to uh, get your asses in gear and do Shemi 1 and 2 HD, or at least announce that you're doing it, because we're at to, you know, under a year before Shenmue 3, and I'm hoping now, the big issue I have with Shenmue 3 lately, though, has been a lot of these updates, a lot of the attention, a lot of the information is really just within the circle of people that are already Shenmue fans and are already kind of guaranteed people. Most of us have, you know, pre-ordered copies pretty much already uh, through the Kickstarter. So I really want to see more interaction. I want to see more um, ads or things on big stages with E3 coming up and different shows before then. I was pretty upset that there was no showing or mention or anything of Shenmue at the PlayStation Experience, considering that that is kind of Sony's deal with this here. That's kind of the only, you know, the marketing is the big thing that they're a part of for this, so what the heck. But hopefully this year we're going to start seeing a lot more attention pushed into the mainstream. That's the big thing. We need Shenmue 3 to sell very well and not just sell amongst people that are already Shenmue fans and the few people that are curious. We really need to push it more to a mainstream audience without changing elements of the games to make it more mainstream, just selling it more to the mainstream audience. And I really, really hope that we start seeing more mainstream-driven advertising or talking about the game and some more kind of gameplay-focused videos. Uh, the last thing here, which is really cool, I'll put a link in the description to the LEGO Ideas page and put your vote for Sega Classic Arcade Machines. These could be really, really, really cool LEGO sets. Oh, what are the three they have here? I'm trying to remember. A Space Harrier, Outrun, and Thunderblade. I think those are the three they're going to do. And the possible minifigures that could come with them include Yu Suzuki himself. That's really cool. And even a slim possibility of Ryo Suzuki being in there. But even if it's Yu Suzuki, like, that's incredible. And, like, I would definitely grab that Space Harrier machine in a second. I mean, I'd get all of them, obviously, but yeah, those would be amazing if those became actual LEGO products. Right now, they're just proposals, but you can put your support behind it, and I think that would be incredible and an amazing thing to add to the collection. So that's kind of it for now. Uh, next time, I kind of want to talk a little bit about uh, a topic I was talking about with one of my friends the other day, uh, Shinmu 2, the Dreamcast versus the Xbox version. Just my personal take, not going through all the technical differences and the history behind the two versions and whatever, that's been done to death over the past you know, decade and a half, but just some of my personal preferences and why I prefer one version over the other, and a little bit of you know my history with it, which version did I experience first. So I'll see you guys in the next video.